breaks loose. Are you ready for the Well, welcome again to Grotty Orloff After Dark. It's Friday night, May 21st here in uh, Gratuville, and um, once again, the sun is set here in Gratuville, and from the bottlers of Bubble Up, and the makers of Fang, the breakfast drink for vampires, the Gratuville Off Show is once again here on the air, here on the magnificent YouTube uh platform so it's uh, another it was another rainy cloudy May day here in Gratuville yeah it's unbelievable I, I was telling you before I, I've never seen it so cloudy and rainy like Seattle in Gratuville Texas in May Unbelievable. So, um, what have I been up to? Um, well, I appreciate Charlton66 mentioning me in a video, and, and he's going to start doing ride-along videos where he tours around his uh, hometown and shows all the places where he used to buy comics and all the important places in his town that'll be great I can't wait for that and uh, graphic man put up a tremendous video yesterday showing uh, how covers change and reprints it's unbelievable um, and I really want to thank uh, Captain Strange Life for sending me a great package and he sent me a look at this uh, cool reproduction of Strange Tales that introduced Gra 2 my uh, parents named me after this comic book and this Flash Gordon reproduction cover and this, uh, look at that. And he sent me some other cool stuff too and he sent my wife uh, some gloves to help her hands because uh, she's having a lot of pain in her hands. So that was, and they worked almost instantly and she was just really over the moon about that. Um, Yeah, he also sent me some uh, my lights that I'm uh, desperately needing. That's something I gotta go out and buy for sure um, because I've uh, I gotta get my collection in order, build it back better. The Great Reset of the Gratuorloff comic book collection. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of that today. Don't have any new pickups or new acquisitions. Uh, I haven't been. Uh, I've been working three days a week, organizing and discovering treasures in the back issue collection of a local comic store. And um, for the first few weeks I was working there, I was like, "Oh, this is great!" And I put it in a pile for myself at the end of the month. But I've been doing that lately, so I'm proud of myself. Now I'm. Uh, this is a cool comic, but, you know, just put the price on it, put it in the bin. So, I think I'm getting inoculated from that. But then there haven't been a lot of Silver Age comics, or any, showing up, so that's probably why it's um, pretty easy to do that. Um, so... Here. Oh, this is something uh, I must have mentioned on this show that I keep hearing people talking about Walmart and the comics they have at Walmart, and then I, uh, whenever I'm in a Walmart for whatever reason, drug drags me into that horrible place. Uh, I'll ask someone, "Do you have comics and comic books?" And they look at me like I'm crazy, they say, oh, well, if we do, we'll be in the card section, or over there, and then they're never, like, like, greeting cards, but I think they're up by the cashier, or by the collector's baseball, Yu-Gi-Oh type cards, but I've never seen them, but I, um, 
Captain Strange Life sent this really cool looking comic. Looks kind of like the old early 70s days where they had 100 page giants of Swamp Thing. And uh, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I mean, if the comic industry wants to, to thrive or continue on at all, they've got to get comics into the hands of kids, into a new generation. And instead, the older generation that read, you know, Swamp Thing on its first go, go around, so a lot of them are still buying the new comics, and a lot of them, like me, I like it was New Comic Day two days ago, Wednesday, and I, I looked at the stuff, and there was, it was just, eh. I saw an issue of Fantastic Four where it looked like Doctor Doom was getting married, and he had a bride with a mask on, and I, the cover was kind of cool. I flipped through it, it didn't. The art didn't really grab me, I mean, it wasn't terrible. Then I saw that there's a cover where Daredevil's a girl and is taking off his mask. And then I hear that Iron Man is a teenage girl. And uh, all of this, uh, just, I, I don't have any interest in all this stuff. They're, they're aiming at a complete, they're aiming at an imaginary audience that they think is out there of college age millennials that are millennials or college age whatever you call them now that are really interested in the social justice warrior uh, woke stuff that but I don't think they're buying it they may say yeah that way to go you've got a hero named safe space you got a hero named uh, wet blanket or whatever but they don't buy it you know they say that's great that you did that to Lando Calrissian that's great that that you did, you know, you got rid of those old 1970s Star Wars people and you got new women people as the heroes and everything, and, and but they're not buying the tickets, they're just putting on Twitter, way to go. Anyway, so uh, you want to get a new audience, you want to continue on, you got to get comics into the hands of kids, and they're not in the, and you're, the direct distribution is what killed comics. It's being sold only in comic stores. It used to be they were everywhere. They were every bookstore, every drugstore, every 7-Eleven, every Mr. M, every convenience store had a rack of comic books and kids were exposed to them and kids bought them. Now, uh, the only kids that really show up in comic stores are looking for Yu-Gi-Oh cards or they're looking for Batman meets Fortnite just to get some code out of the comic to play with a different skin in the video game. They'll never read the comic. And, uh, uh, yeah, I actually have seen a few kids show up looking for comics. Just that, that are actually, you know, there's a kid that comes in looking for Spider-Man comics. And, and that's cool, you know, he's looking, he was, he was, he asked the clerk the other day, I'm looking for a Spider-Man comic, but it's really old. And he said, it, it's from 2018. <laughs> and it was said to the, uh, the kid, uh, you know, that guy back there organizing the comics, he likes comics from the 1960s. And he said, oh, that's really old. And then the clerk said, I like comics from the 1980s. He says, well, that's old too. Oh, uh, well. So, there are, there's a few kids, but you, the industry's not, not, unless you, you need to get these comics into Walmart, and you need to put them in a format that are, what does this cost? That's the question. They, they, they gotta figure out a way. If they can put out these dollar comics, these, uh, Marvel Milestone, or whatever they call the little, the comics that reprint 60s and 70s comics, and it's a dollar, they should be able to, um, to do that. I don't know. Who knows? Well, this is cool. This is, uh, it's, uh, it's got, it looks like it's, got, it, well, so it's got early 70s Swamp Thing, and it's got more recent Swamp Thing. I don't like this new trend of having a page of art in an ad. I like the way it was when I was a kid, but there were two pages of art, 
and then you turn the page and there were two pages of ads but see here again you got a, an ad and a page of art I like the two page spread you see this is a two page spread that's how it's supposed to be done this actually looks pretty well done so they have a reprint they have reprints of old and new swamp thing and this gets uh, kids in into it damn Just a moment. No, that actually isn't early 70s. It fooled me for a second, but it's great. Uh, this art here looks pretty good. What tipped me off? It almost looked like Bernie Wrightson. Up there, it looks a little like Richard Corbin, but then when I see this kind of thing, I realize, oh, that's not 1970s. That's going a little farther than the 70s would have taken. But this is cool. Um, oh, it's $4.99. That's not too bad. DC's charging $7 for a new comic now. Uh, that's what I, from what I understand, because I haven't been buying them. Um, I'm if I get any old comics, it's old comics, and so I've got a box here that hasn't been filed in with the rest of my collection. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna start putting in. I'm gonna start assembling a box, and then I'll get it into the collection in there in the other room. Let me see what this is. There's an issue of Marvel Comics Presents. I don't have any fucking idea what this is or why I even bought it. But I must have had this for years. I probably bought it for Tigra. This is the thing that has two covers. The New Warriors, I don't even know what that is. I think the, there's a new New Warriors and that's like the, the real politically correct stuff I understand. What is this? Uh, Marvel Comics Presents. I must have bought this for like a quarter or something just for the cover or something. I don't even know what that is. And I, and I bought it years ago, probably when it came out. Marvel Feature Defenders. I need to switch. I'll put this in one of those My Lights that Captain Strange Life saw. I've got to buy some backing boards, though. I hear there's a shortage on boxes. I've heard more than a few people say that. Um, I think maybe uh, supplies for comic book supplies are in short uh, stock. Whatever. Here's Marvel Feature presenting the Astonishing Ant-Man. These are not new purchases. This is stuff I've had for years. Alright, I gotta get this system going here. You know, um, Librarians. Oh, look at this. The Gratu Orlov show provides a safe space for deplorable people like us. Librarians. I don't know about real librarians, but school librarians are told that they need to weed their library frequently, like once a year, a mass weeding. You know about this? Very disturbing. Um, the the word is they tell the librarians books get old, and some books aren't in demand. No one checks them out. 
for a long time, like years, they sit on the shelf, or they get out of date. You know, the ideas in them are no longer correct. So they weed out of their circulation library a bunch of books each year. Now, the books have stamps that say such and such school library on them. So they say destroy the books, make sure you put them in the dumpster, get rid of the books, do not, because if, if they just wind, they don't want them winding up in a secondhand bookstore, and then someone says, hey, this is a school book, my taxpayer dollars paid for this book, why is it, why is it here for me to buy in a, in a used bookstore? So to prevent that, they say destroy the books. Now, you could just send the books to another country or to another part of the of this country where they don't have as many books, but no, you got to destroy them because they're old, right? And I hear this from librarians, and I remember I would say to the librarian, but when I was in junior high, my favorite thing was to go in the library and get these books off the shelf from the 1950s showing what it will be like someday when man lands on the moon and showing what rockets were going to look like and with these big round globes and, and the fins on the rockets and it was just like they're predicting the future and, and the, and the uh, space stations that you know look like in 2001 the, the big uh, looks like a balancing top where I guess for gravity they have it in that shape but no, you gotta get rid of books. Well, sometimes you get a cool librarian, and it's like, I'm a librarian. I, I love books. I don't want to throw these books away. So they'll sneak the old books to teachers, and they'll say, here, I've crossed out the name of the books. Keep them in your library in your for your kids to read in the classroom. I've got to move them out of the library, but I just can't throw them away. So here, I know you're cool. You're an English teacher. Here, take these books. And, uh, and so there was a really great light, and it, this this librarian had to hide things for years from people that came in that were up above that said, "Get rid of that old 48 star flag. That's no good anymore." When it's a historical object, when the United States had 48 stars, no, it's old. Get rid of anything old. I want anything old out of here. So he had to squirrel away and hide school trophies from the 1920s and hide them, you know, like. Fahrenheit 451. Anyway, there was a point to this story. Uh, yeah, this book <laughs> is, see how he's had to cross out the name of the school? But uh, I put it in my school library, but it was just, I, I had to eventually just pull it out because it all it did was just make people laugh, the kids would laugh because uh, um, I guess people named Richard don't go by the name Dick anymore um, but when this was uh, printed was a, yeah, in uh, 1955 I guess people still went by Dick all right so yeah, libraries, weed out old books. Horrible idea. I am your host, Dr. Gratu Orla, playing some of the greatest music ever recorded, Radio Gratu 106.7. Another thing. Let's go try something, try something new. Don't you think we could, don't you think While Obama, I think Obama was president at the time, they made an announcement that you will get in trouble. You will be fined massive amounts of money if you sell any old children's books to children because old children's books were printed with ink that had lead in it. So if you're in to have a garage sale and you sell some old 1935 or 1950s children's book and it winds up in the hands of kids, you are in trouble. I think they got rid of that. But I was, I was immediately thinking, oh, they just want to get rid of the fact that kids can see that there was a time when there were two parents 
and, and my mom stayed at home, the dad went out to work. They don't want you to know about that Dick and Jane 1950s uh, world. Um, they want you, they want to get rid of the old books. That's my first 1984 George Orwell thought. Fire claims life of two Avengers. Imagine if you saw the headline nowadays. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they, they covertly, you don't even know it, they're trying to change history and, oh well. This is Marvel feature number six. I'm gonna get bored, so don't worry about it. Shit, motherfucker. Let me get some of these books in there. I showed you this book last time. Well, I lost a subscriber and then I gained a subscriber. So that last night I gained a new subscriber. So that's cool. But it's still, it's it's fucking weird that, uh, excuse my language, I still feel like I've been, uh, whenever I see that, I like it, like, trying to start the, whenever I see that, uh, I go to my page and I see like I've lost a subscriber or two. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. I don't know why. It's just it's because if you do a channel that's real personal and you talk about your life and everything, and when you lose a subscriber, you feel like, geez, someone really out there doesn't like me. But uh, it could just be someone that got kicked off of YouTube or something. Okay. So now Kid Cold Outlaw is now my lard. Yes indeed, yes indeed. So um I think that there are that I uh, used to use these my lights that were a little bit thinner than that. Well those are my lights. Maybe there's different types. Um I need to get, someone told me that they're, they're out of, I think Duncanville Books told me they didn't have any last time I was there. Um, wow. Well, so, you know, yesterday I saw unfortunately a little bit of the daily press conference from the White House and none of the reporters had masks on and uh, then I saw uh, Biden and that weird woman that follows him everywhere that I guess is our vice president came out yesterday and they didn't have their masks on. Usually they put the masks on and then walk out and then take them off immediately to show us how to behave. But they didn't have masks on and I'm seeing more and more people in stores without them. But, you know, the weird thing is, I think, um, as much as I hate those things, shit, I've got toothpaste or something all over my pants. Um, I'm probably going to wind up being the last person wearing them because I'm just not brave enough to go in there and, and deal with people like turning on me like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <gasps> A maskless person! You're, you know, I don't want to be that person. I just wear them, but... But I, I, I like get out of my car and then I put it on like right as I, I'm going in and, and then I take it. I don't know. I feel weird like I'm being an asshole when I do that. I put it on when I get to about 20 yards of the store where I see everyone else like putting it on before they leave their car. And I, it, it's, I'm, I'm not sure. What am I supposed to be doing? I don't, I gotta, I, ne I never really learned the proper protocol. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I don't really like conflict, man. Never, never really been into conflict. Yeah. So enough about that shit. But anyway, it just looks like maybe, you know, everyone thought it was going to end last summer. Maybe it's really going to end this summer. I don't know. 
But uh, now I read this morning that there's some new strain that's supposed to be starting in dogs. And that there's some new strain that two cases have been found in North Texas, which is where Gratudo is located. I don't know. I think maybe people are starting to get wise and they're saying, oh shit, we better just let everybody go back to normal before before everyone realizes what the real story is. I don't know. Strange Tales 133. Oh my gosh. So how was your Friday evening? little while my old friend Gerald will probably be showing up comes here every Friday evening about the only visitor we ever get here now my wife's finding some really cool Victorian looking house Victorian houses not looking Victorian houses in uh, Iowa. Uh, I don't know what Iowa's like. When you're looking for houses and you don't have a set place to look for because you're retired and you could really pretty much move anywhere, you start to realize how fucked up this country really is. Because when you, you find a little small town and then you look it up, Google it, and see what um, what's it like there. And then you realize just like every place and because because they shipped all the jobs overseas and it wasn't the Democrats it was the Republicans too they, they our country has been all our jobs have been shipped overseas and everybody almost everybody is on meth the whole it's like a country addicted to meth and a crime of some sort Sometimes you'll find a town that's like Mayberry, little tiny town, uh, but uh, it's just incredible, man. It's like our country's been ruined. I don't know if there's a, I hope there's a way we could come back from all this. Maybe we're too far gone. There's 120. Get it in my life. Again, Captain Strange Life, this is a wonderful thing. Inside, this is really helping me here. But, um, I was expecting to retire and then be able to supplement it uh, with a job that's impossible to do while we're going through all this uh, um, stuff. But working in that comic store is fun, you know, that's cool. So, um, so, um, what else have I been seeing? Oh, yeah, there were a couple of books that Charlton 66 showed on his last episode that I, now I've got to get these books. I got to get them on my wife's Amazon wish list because they, they just look amazing. Uh, about comic book, uh, uh, comic books of the seventies and ones called, you know, old, old cartoons and stuff. A couple of coffee table books that are really neat. So, uh, oh, at work, 
this uh, I'm going through this collection that was bought this guy brought in his brother's comics and he said hey I can't keep moving these we're about to move I got three or four boxes of comics and, and the owner went through them and said um a lot of this stuff not really stuff I can use but then I guess he got to the last box and he said oh well this stuff's good and he wound up paying him a couple hundred bucks and I've been processing this collection is astonishing it's horrible going through it because your hands get it's awful every bag is stick sticks to the others and they're all the guy put two comics in each bag facing each way and then the tape sticks to the other and uh, it's all yellow and disgusting and mucus looking it just and your hands get covered in that old bag feeling but when the comics come out of the bags just like um, Silver Age Dave was talking recently he bought a collection and they were in old bags and he says you know these old bags they say switch them out every few years but they really do the trick even these bags that have been there 30 years and the con anyway this guy's comics most of them were like mint condition once you get these disgusting yellow mucus looking bags off of them and the guy uh, was a serviceman so almost every one of them that could have a mark jewelers insert had that and that was a neat but anyway so um but he bought some complete runs of comics that i don't think people are looking for unless i'm completely out of the loop like booster gold and uh, the 80s blue beetle and I'm going through them, and, I'm, and then this this guy comes in, like I don't know, probably in his 20s, couldn't have been more than 30, and he says, "I'm looking for the Blue Beetle," and for he was really upbeat. It's kind of like someone off of the set of Leave It the Beaver. I'm looking for the Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Do you have any of those? I said, "Yeah, I just put some out there." And, and here I'm about to price these, or you, and he wound up buying some of them. And I said, you're probably the only person in town that's looking for these. <laughs> yeah, they probably put the rest of them behind the counter for you for the next time you're in. But, um, so I, he, he was so excited, and, uh, uh, and, 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 uh, was in one, and, and was helping me bag and board the comics. He just wanted to talk, and... And he, he was just, he says, I'm really lucky. Wherever I go, I have luck. And so he's saying that's why he just happened to luck into the Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. He says, I, that's what I know. I know everywhere I go, I, I'm lucky. And uh, anyway, he was a really nice guy. And he, he was about to shake my hand. And he says, oh, well, here, we'll do the little fist touching, not fist. Uh, touching elbow thing because of the coof but then at the end he said he says hey man you know we wound up shaking hands because you know you're gonna get it you're gonna get it so uh, whatever at this point so uh but he was really cool and then while i was talking to him while i was grading and bagging comics this guy comes in this real tall guy he says hey i'm about to graduate law school and so is my buddy, and I want to buy him a present for our law school graduation. Uh, and I says, I don't know anything about Daredevil, but I want to get him a Daredevil comic because, you know, he's a lawyer, Matt, Matt Murdock. And I said, well, I was showing him the Daredevil comics in the back issue rack, and they were from the early 70s, and they were in really bad shape. And I said, hey, you know, if you're getting it for a graduation present. You probably don't want some comic that's all dog-eared or has been through a fire, <laughs> you know, some of that smoke damage at the top. He said, you probably want to get something nice. And I priced a bunch of Daredevil comics from that same collection recently that were the really ones that are sought after and are going to go up in value. And then you'd be really giving him something. He said, yeah, well, I have a budget of about $40. So I was thinking he's not going to want to buy a $3 comic as a graduation present from law school. So I went back behind the counter where they keep the the more pricey comics and and, uh, and he wound up buying uh, uh, the daredevil cover it's like a yellow cover with 
close-up of Elektra, and she's got her little dagger, sword, whatever, and it's got Daredevil's mask on it, and an issue from right about that same time period with a kingpin on it. So, he's, so yeah, um, that was fun. It's fun to help people and get them, to, you know, your knowledge actually helps people. Um, so, uh, yeah. That might be a little too loud. But we're having a party here on Friday night. We're having a hi-fi record hop here on the Gratu Orloff program. Gratu After Dark. I could turn that down, which would require walking seven feet. Or maybe I can just fast forward. Okay. Now we get some sleazy Gratu After Dark music. Oh my gosh. I am freaking starving. I haven't even had breakfast yet, and here it's after dark here in Gratuful. I hear that's how you can lose weight, by not eating. People always wonder, how can I lose weight? And I think the solution is to not eat for a long time. I've seen it in wartime, it seems to work. Ooh, yay, yay. Tales to Astonish 53. Uh, look at Mike Marvel there. Reminds me of David Nino Rodriguez, this uh, boxer from Texas that's always, uh, my wife and I subscribe to him on YouTube. He's a very right wing commentator and he's fun to uh, watch. And uh, my uh, wife's sister wound up just falling in love with him and watches him daily. <laughs> it's just because, uh, but um, he's kind of a meathead a little bit, but he delivers some important messages. There's still some people that haven't been banned magic that they can't really say much on YouTube, but oh wow, this Marvel feature Number four has a Mark Jewelers variant for those of you that actually it's got be a police officer or detective and then it's got the Mark Jewelers stuff. Actually, this isn't Mark Jewelers, this is National Diamond Sales. Oh, okay. So Mark Jewelers is got more car is more cardboard. This is cool because first of all. You know, there's a lot of guys in the army that wind up getting out and becoming police officers, right? And you know that. And then it's double spread of this company, National Diamond Sales. But then get a load of what it has here. It's a lingerie stuff. And it's in a kid's comic. So, yeah. But you say, well, kids aren't going to be buying those comics if they're for sale in the PX. Bullshit. That's where I bought the big majority of my comics when I was in first, second, third, fourth grade. Because my dad's in the Army. We were, we were living on base, first, second grade. and No, second grade we weren't. First kindergarten, first grade, we were living on an Army base in Germany. And then, uh, but we went to the PX every week, and that's where I would get these comics. Oh, the great thing about the PX... See, there's a little star in the back. They always put a star to show that you'd bought it at the PX. Uh, they didn't charge tax, so that was cool. So you paid a straight two dimes for that. No, no nonsensical tax. 
you know they don't make soldiers pay tax because your taxes pay the soldier's salary so if you made them pay tax they're helping pay their own salary so that makes sense except um, with that reasoning you would also think that teachers shouldn't pay tax because um, because um, they're paying their own salary but at least half price books and records say gives you a 10 or is it a 20 I don't know if it's 10 or I think it's 10 percent discount so that means you effectively aren't paying tax a little better than not paying tax and Lone Star Comics, Buddy Saunders, the owner of Lone Star Comics, always had a teacher discount because Buddy Saunders, before he opened his comic store, he was always a comic book dealer since he was like in junior high. He would mail or send comics off mail order. But when he opened his store, he had been a teacher, a high school or junior high school art teacher. So he had respect for teachers. He always gave them a discount. But some other stores you know I'll ask them and well no we just have a discount for first responders trust me sometimes teachers are first responders you ever see two girls get into a fight over a guy might as well be a police officer uh, but um, yeah, and I asked this one comic store. They, they have a pretty good selection over in Dallas, but I don't really go there anymore. Uh, once a comic store starts putting all their comics in drawers, that it, I don't like going through drawers somehow. But uh, I asked them once uh, about a t-shirt discount. He says, a t-shirt discount? You want a discount on t-shirts? Yes. Um, no, I just got kind of, uh, for teachers because you know Lone Star. I shouldn't have. To, I just I ask. You know, you go in a store, you ask if they have teacher discounts, and he seemed very snooty about it. You know, some comic store clerks are kind of assholes. You know, the, that's that's the uh, stereotype from The Simpsons. So when you find a comic book store where the people behind the counter are, are nice, then. Uh, that's a that's a keeper. That's a place to keep going to. Marvel feature number seven. cent era comics with they have I don't know I call them window box I think maybe that might be the term I don't know who invented the term maybe no one did but it seems like I've heard it before but the artist contained in a box and that was done I think around 72 in the early days of the 12 cent comic let me uh, let me see I'll give you the exact time period September 72, so this would have been on sale about July of uh, 72. So that would have been about the time that we were coming over from Germany to Hampton, Virginia. So yeah, my uh, second grade year, I remember the window box comics on Marvel Comics.
Kid Colt starring in Gunsmoke Western. You would do well to, here on YouTube, look up the radio show Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. The, the, um, the television show Gunsmoke that ran forever from the 50s to the 70s. Uh, before it was a TV show, it was a radio show. And on radio, you know, TV James Arnez, who was a giant hulking guy, he played the thing in the 1950s monster movie. But James Arnez played Marshall Matt Dillon. But in uh, the radio show, he's played by William Conrad. William Conrad couldn't play him in the TV show because he didn't have the right appearance, but his voice was perfect. Um, the cool thing about the radio show, it was better than the TV show, first of all. And uh, it had... It was very realistic, very, the sound effects, everything, you really felt like you were there in the Old West. So I would recommend that you listen to some episodes of the original Gunsmoke radio show on uh, YouTube. And the Lone Ranger radio show was really good too. Old radio, just in general, is a lot of fun. Uh, Marvel's Greatest Comics reprinting the first part of the Galactus Trilogy. Silver Age comics sleeved is a great relief. But you know, there's so many people that just collect only key issues and they don't have the. There's a great joy in holding and reading a comic from this time period while you listen to that music because they belong together. And if you're buying key issues and, and putting them in slabs on your wall while listening to hip hop or whatever music's popular today, no offense to those of you that love music of today, but you might as well just listen to the music of today and read these comics that are coming out today because I look at a I look at kid culture in its totality. Um, the premise behind this channel is that I concentrate on the stuff that parents and teachers would throw away. I concentrate on the stuff that if you had it at school, you'd be sent to the principal. So, I love monster magazines and I love uh, comic books, movie posters, and old records, and girly magazines, and all of this cult this kid culture, forbidden kid culture, and uh, you need to, um, if you're reading a 50s comic, you should know about what was going on in the culture around at that time. It makes it a much more satisfying experience. I'm not saying you can't enjoy a, a Steve Ditko comic book unless you're uh, aware that Kennedy was the president and you're listening to the Shirelles, but it sure helps. Just like this. If you're aware that KISS was like the hottest band in the world for 7th graders at the time, then you understand what they're doing with this, and they're making it look like the KISS logo. I don't think the average millennial would get that, but 
I always wondered about that. They're making, you know, the KISS logo was cool to kids. So why are they making the Ku Klux Klan's logo cool looking? I I don't think they were thinking. I just know that they probably thought, well, KISS is selling comics for us because there was a KISS comic magazine that Marvel was putting out about the time and they probably thought, well, we'll, uh, we need to make this comic look more like Kiss because probably people weren't buying that comic. Black Panther was never a comic that really sold. They tried to keep bringing it back. It didn't really sell until the movie. Um, it's like X-Men was never a popular comic until um, they revived the new, they started the new X-Men. Then it then it took off with comic collectors, but it wasn't really popular until that 1990s cartoon. I remember seeing, uh, I was a substitute teacher around that time and seeing kids, third grade kids, I'm Storm, I'm Cyclops playing on the playground. And I'm thinking, boy, that wouldn't have happened when I was a kid, first of all, no one knew who the X-Men were, even the kids that read comics, but it just was not a, something that the average kid was uh, knew about. Okay, Strange Tales 166. Oh yeah, Captain Strange Life also sent me some uh, little uh, bags for 45 records. I found a great record on YouTube. It's it's from 1966. It's the it, the song is called Dark Knight by the Dark Knights, and it's about Batman. And it's kind of done in a little bit of an alley oop style. Uh, it's like I, I was realizing when was when did they start calling batman the dark knight i know he was called the dark knight detective when i started reading comics but when was he just called that when did they start just saying dark knight alone um, um then I, I i saw there was a i was listening to a lot of garage rock and then there was a really good song really good and it was by a band called the holocaust and it was from the 60s. And then YouTube had put a little disclaimer underneath the, 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 the picture. It had a picture of the 45 RPM record from the 1960s, probably from the, about 1966, which was kind of the, the um, epicenter of the explosion of garage rock. And they call it garage rock because every, almost every neighborhood had several bands put together, teenagers got together and they would practice in their garage their uh, music. You know, this band was called the Holocaust and uh, you know I realized uh, going through a lot of 1970s comics I'll look at an Aquaman comic and it says H is for Holocaust and it'll say a Holocaust of this and that and then you realize well what gee I think that the word Holocaust now only means one thing, but if you, because I think of, there was a miniseries on television. It was a big deal. You know, they had roots in 1976, and I think about 79 or 80, there was a miniseries called Holocaust, and it had big name movie stars in it, and uh, big, big deal um, and I think after that miniseries then the word Holocaust came to mean the extermination in World War II of the Jews I it, it didn't uh, have that meaning before um, so, anyway Tales to Astonish 72 He looks like I feel right now. I've had this damn pain right below my rib cage for months. I, didn't, I thought it was how I'm sleeping, and I started getting worried. Am I dying? And then I think, well, when I lifted that big record, that big 
a record holder that, that had collapsed back about 20, 30 episodes ago. You didn't see me lift it, but I lifted it by myself, and I'm wondering, I think some of the shit I've been lifting a lot has been, uh, maybe, I don't know, I think a hernia is lower, I don't know, but I think I fucked myself up from lifting, uh, and then I was thinking of lifting some chairs and bringing them in here so I have more, more seating for the, uh, movie, uh, theater in here. Because, see, I'm, I'm sitting in a movie theater. I don't know if you're aware of that. So much light that the screen's kind of, uh, got a lot of, they call it light pollution. So, guys up. bag's a little wavy. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of it. <sighs> See, it looks much better. Thor 169. Yeah, some of these, I'm going to have to get into the Silver Age boxes to put some of these uh, books in their proper spot. So, that will be fun to do. That's not going to be today, but soon. Marvel, you've seen this before, Marvel feature number one. I've got a couple of copies of that. I've got all of these Red Sonia comics, but I think they're mostly in the boxes in the other room, so these have to be filed in with them. Here's number seven. Starting to really build up the Conan the Barbarian selection in that store that I work at. Um, um, Charlton 66 was saying that that I look a lot like John Buscema, the artist of Conan and you know the Avengers and those great artists and. Uh, I showed my wife, you know, do you think I look like this guy? And she says, uh, yeah, you kind of do. But that's a lot worse people you can look like. Uh, that's a good thing. That was a compliment. John Buscema, that whole family is great. He has a brother, Sal, that's, uh, that was a comic artist. And then his granddaughter is like a, kind of a, one of these Wednesday Adams type girls that and she's a really good artist draws kind of cutesy stuff but she's been on the front cover of comic books and yeah Stephanie Basama you need to look her up if you haven't ever heard of her boy I got some shitty comics here You know what I need to do is, uh, I only have a couple of issues, I, I need to go and, and get a complete run of Hex, because I people tell me that that comic is fucking amazing. I always read Jonah Hex. For some reason, maybe I thought that Hex was a ripoff, but it's the same writer. It just... It just, uh... I never saw that shitty, I assume it's shitty, everyone says it's shitty, but I never saw that shitty Jonah Hex movie. Um, 
although I think it's probably good casting to cast Josh Brolin as Jonah Hex, but you just have to have someone that knows what they're doing to make that movie. It needs to be like a spaghetti western. But I think they gave him superpowers where he can talk to the dead or something stupid like that. I don't know. My mother-in-law saw Jonah Hex and said it was really good. But then she's never read the comic, you know? It's like these people, oh, the Fantastic Four, what a great movie. Have you ever read the comic? No. Well, then you have no fucking idea what it could have been instead of that shit that you're claiming to like. Yeah, I would never be that confrontational with someone. I would just say... Oh, really? I haven't seen it. Uh, oh, yeah. You say it's good, huh? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to be that kind of asshole where someone says, Hey, I really like something. Oh, yeah, that's shitty. What are you, a fucking idiot? I've not, never been that kind of uh, that person. <sighs> a lot of people out there like that. We were listening to David Wilcock yesterday. He had a live broadcast on YouTube. And he says that basically something's about to happen, kind of akin to the rapture, that, um, that uh, something that God is about to do, and that's a solar flash or solar flare, something where the sun gets real bright. And then if you've, if you've really been a good person, that you get to stay here on the beautiful earth, but if you've been, if you just have a lot of bad karma and you're just filled with hate, that you get relocated to some other planet to work out your uh, problems. And it's apparently, the Neanderthals were people that could come from another planet that were having to work out their issues, you know, and then they died off. I don't know. Some like that. I can't really remember what he was talking about. But he says that they're about to reveal the existence of space aliens, that that disclosure is about to happen within about a month or so. That, and there have been a lot of articles in the, in the media about, yeah, UFOs are, and then Obama came out and he had to, yes, UFOs are real, we don't know what they are. Um, so, um, yeah, there's all kinds of, crazy shit happening here. Tales of Suspense 81. Just astonished 64. Well, having weird dreams lately. Um, you know, I'd like to I think about. Like, you know, I really should be there, you know? Like, when you retire from work, you start to have these uh, weird dreams, but they're all dreams. I don't know. Uh, you know, like when... It's like you... Uh, it bottles up like when my uh, 
parents died, then I had a delayed reaction. You know, like a year later, I woke up crying. Um, This is a comic bought uh, that I bought from that store that I'm working at, but I bought this a couple of years ago before I started working there. And uh, I want to get rid of the bag it's in. See, it's uh, they had marked this down to a dollar, which is, these these comics, as far as I don't think, have much value. The old uh, reprints, but. They're fun to read. The problem is they'll edit a little bit out of them. Uh, a few panels or a page or two because they have a lesser page count. This is what I'm talking about. You have two pages of ads, right? And, well, having said that, I'm wrong because here is an example where they have an ad and then a page of art. But usually, We've got two pages of art, two pages of ads. It's Electro Man. I forgot that ad. Yeah, there's a, a metal sign very much like that of Thor that I want to go get. Here's the real, well, the real Marvel Captain Marvel. The real Captain Marvel is, of course, Billy Batson. Um, there's uh, some new Mego figures that I want to get, but I haven't been anywhere near a Walmart. I have no idea why I'm putting my comic like this in on my light. Because it's not like it's, uh, oh well. Just put everything in my lights. All right, need a change of music there. The Marvel Saga. You know what I've been listening to over the last day is a lot of Ethan Van Skyver, um, Night Tiger Comics says I sound a lot like Ethan Van Skyver. I asked my and I asked my wife, do I sound like this guy? And she says, well, not so much. It's more the attitude. But <laughs> those guys, man, there was some. They do these four-hour shows where they're in little boxes talking to each other, and they just tear apart the comic book industry of today and the politically correct uh, world of today. And, uh, I. Uh, it's fun to listen to. They keep showing clips of some red-haired woman that I guess is a DC writer, and she's just saying, well, if you don't like my politics, uh, then why are you reading my comic books? And it's like, just don't buy my comic books. She's just like a real 
B. And uh, I don't know what comics she writes uh, or comics. Uh, maybe one of you can help me with that. But uh, she's really annoying, and they, they keep playing clips of her. I have a couple of copies of Marvel Premiere number 14 with Doctor Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts. Okay, um, a lot of you subscribe to this channel, well there's not a lot of you subscribing to my channel, but many of you that subscribe to this channel um, don't have like videos that you put up. I encourage all of you to put videos up. I'm trying to get my wife to do it. She wants to, but it just... I'm waiting for the, she's waiting for the right time, but... Um, she'd be great. You all have stuff to share, and uh, you don't have to be photogenic. As, uh, and, and if you don't want to be on camera, just like do it kind of like Silver Age Dave, where you're just a pair of hands, like uh, Mr. Bill. And uh, I think that. Oh, and Tom Smith, you, you were saying, well, maybe I will do a channel. you got to do it. Whether you show yourself or not, you say, I just don't have enough time because I'm busy reading all my humor collection. Tom Smith, you see him comment a lot down below, has every single humor magazine publication in history. All the mads, back to issue number one, all the mad imitations, including the comic book imitations of mad in the 50s, every issue. I think he's missing one special of Sick Magazine, and Sick Magazine's hard to find. Uh, cracked, um, he's got all of this stuff, and then he's a huge music collector, and has several channels up on YouTube where he's put up uh, all these songs from different eras, the 20s, 50s, uh, 40s, uh, um, you've got, anyway, you need to do a channel where you, you show your record collection, where you go through your magazines, uh, you gotta do it, it's, it's fun to do, usually it's fun, and uh, if you, your phone or whatever isn't up to snuff, I need to upgrade my phone. But I understand that all the idiots are rushing out because they're putting out a new iPhone. So the thing is to go in and buy one of the old iPhones that no one wants because all the, the people that buy lottery tickets and want to be cool are going to buy that new phone while they live in a cardboard box. Um, so, uh, yeah, get a, just get a new phone maybe a generation or two older and then just do your channel and uh, yeah satana the devil's daughter wore a lot more clothing in the four color comics than she did in the black and white magazines as i recall <laughs> she she was dressed very conservatively here with her burning her to death but in those magazines, she was more like Vampirella. I always love the, those female characters from that era, Tigra and Satana and uh, Lilith, which was Dracula's daughter. These kind of evil girl characters. Which... God damn, you know, they had in, in, in Avengers Endgame, they had that moment where all the girl Avengers, uh, like, oh, okay, we're gonna rush Thanos now, and then all the girls ran in. Wouldn't it have been great if Tigra was there, and Lilith, and Satana? And uh, that would have been cool. You, you get more of these obscure characters into your movies, Marvel. Yeah. So we, they're bringing in Morbius into the movies. Man-Thing, they made it wasn't done by Marvel Studios, but there was some shitty Man-Thing movie 
but I'm, Marvel could do better. Werewolf by Night's never been done, and Ghost Rider's been done several times badly, not by Marvel Studios, and apparently he's been done in, 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 a, in the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, which was, oh man, I said such high hopes that they would actually do a Man From U.N.C.L.E. James Bond kind of like like in the comic book with all the crazy Jack Kirby, Jim Steranko machinery and flying cars and it would be have a cool theme song like the man from uncle and but nah it was just another boring tv show so much potential wasted Well, soon there'll be a Loki TV show on. Oh, there's another, that guy that came in looking for the Daredevil comic. Was he said, well, I'm looking for Daredevil for my friend. He says, I'm more of a, I'm more into this other stuff. I forget what he's into. He says, but I am looking for Invincible. And I don't know anything about Invincible. I think it's this comic that I saw that looked like it was drawn by a sixth grader. And so I just ignored it. And now it's a TV show and everybody's gaga over it and they're saying, oh, the comic really was good. It just had shitty art. But, but then they got a good artist after a while and it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, The Walking Dead, you know, that comic, everyone's looking for that comic now. And when it came out, I just, uh, okay, it's a rip off of Don, George Romero. It's, the artwork's not very good. Okay, I put it back on the shelf and... Now it's like the biggest thing in the world because they made all these TV shows out of it. I don't know. Sometimes I'm, I, uh, I judge comics. If the artist, if the art isn't up to snuff, I, I don't give it a shot, and then, then I miss out on the cool wave of popular culture, I guess. I don't know. So is Invincible good? Maybe I should look into that. And then this Jupiter Rising or Jupiter Ascending, whatever, um, that's on something now, Netflix. I probably should watch that. I saw the trailer for that. Um, I never read the comic. And then I gotta watch this Mortal Kombat movie because I think it's only gonna be on for a few more days on uh, HBO Maximus, whatever. Never. I think, you know, I saw a Mortal Kombat movie back in the 90s, and maybe I played the video game maybe twice. I mean, it's never been a major part of my life, Mortal Kombat. I mean, I couldn't really tell you the names of all the characters. I'm just kind of aware that it exists. I gotta read these Peacemaker comics. Peacemaker 3. Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. It's a Whitman variant. Boy, do I love the Legion of Superheroes. I need to go, when I get paid in about a week, I'm gonna go to Duncanville Books and I've gotta hunt down some books for a Graphic Man and I've gotta 
hit a half price books or two to finish out what what he was wanting me to get for him and uh, when I'm wondering if I go in Duncanville books I might ask them if it's okay if I uh, record in there because I think it would be fun for you to see that store which is a store I dearly love they don't have teacher discounts though but when I go in and it's one o'clock in the afternoon and I ask for it I ask about a teacher discount it might be kind of obvious that I'm not currently teaching because why am I there at one o'clock in the afternoon then I have to ask do you have retired teacher discounts but they don't have them but their prices are very good, so it's not like you're really getting uh, ripped off. Okay, move this over a little closer. Oh, this uh, this movie, Psycho Beach Party. I've never seen it. It was sent to me by Captain Strange Life. He also sent, and I had, I had a bunch of these, but I, um, I saved a couple, and and, and I, and, and I, he sent me some also, um, and 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 so I should have saved more because now I realize they're kind of historical items. And what happened, what they are, let me explain. A friend of mine about a year and a half ago just was moving and he said, hey, I want these to go to a good home. Here, have my Avengers collection. And it was like issue 16 through about 1975 or 76 of the comics. And they, you know, a lot of them are just like reader copies, but it was the complete run of, of that time period from, you know, what, 64, 65 through about 10 years of Avengers comics, every issue. And some of the, the ones, uh, the early ones were in Robert Bell bags and Robert Bell had an ad that was like always let's see if there's a Robert Bell ad in this issue of Marvel premiere but Marvel Bell <laughs> Robert Bell had a, an ad and it looked like Thor a little bit like Thor but he didn't have the wings on his helmet and the, the blonde hair and he had bees on his uh, outfit and it was and he was holding a sign Robert Bell comics and my friend had ordered a lot of comics from Robert Bell there it is. How about that? Because it was just in al almost every issue. My friend ordered comics from Robert Bell in, uh, back in the late 60s, early 70s. We buy and sell comic books. Marvel Comics Group Checklist and Price List. Over 100,000 comics in stocks and a dollar for complete list. And 45 page Marvel Pocket Checklist with sample comic bag 50 cents for price list only robert bell was box 8326 coral springs florida so robert bell was a famous comic book dealer he's the guy that pretty much invented the idea of comic book bags so um they're historical now but uh so and they, I'll show you. Yeah, they, they flapped over and they looked like that. It was, this was what was written on them. Comic book protective cover for Golden Age Comics. $4 per 100 at 50 cents for postage on orders under $10. Robert Bell, Box 18. Up, okay, at this point he was in New York. So in the 60s, it was in New York. I wonder what which address is on the bags that I got from my friend. Um, these are from New York. So um, 
like a lot of people that live up in the cold part of the U.S., then they retire and they move to Florida, you know, and I bet that's what happened to Robert Bell. And, and there's a note from Captain Strange Life. These Bell bags are from around 1971 or so. I think in 1968 I bought my first Bell bags for $3 per 100. I only have one left. He also had lighter bag. He also had lighter bags, 100 for two bucks. So this, these are the probably the first, the ones that say New York on them. Uh, my friend was probably ordering about the same time as Captain Strange Life. My friend uh, Randy is. Well, let's see, I graduated high school in 1983. He graduated in 1976, so that make him about seven years older than me. And uh, he said he was ordering the Robert Bell, you know, the Avengers from Robert Bell. And he was also ordering Spider-Man, and uh, he didn't give me the Spider-Man and X-Men. He's keeping his Spider-Man, but he, he had sent his X-Men collection off to what is that big auction house uh, here locally? I uh, forget what it's called. But anyway, he, he didn't like how that turned out. And so he had the Avengers. He got rid of a box that he didn't have to carry to his new house when he moved. He kept his Amazing Spider-Man collection, which is pretty much from the very early single-digit number Spider-Man comics through... I don't know when it ended, and he he uh, he was also keeping his New Gods and his Captain Marvel comics. But he said that when the moon landing happened, so that's 1969, he said they were getting out and walking on the moon, and he 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 was so more excited that he'd just gotten a package from Robert Bell and opening up and looking at the old comics, and he wasn't paying attention to man walking on the moon, so. That would have been 69, and those, uh, anyway, it's important to save ephemera also. The little, little shit they give away free at the counter in the comic stores, the posters that they put, are given to put up on the wall in comic stores, if you've got the room, uh, it... That may be the stuff that's actually valuable someday because every comic that comes out today, every single copy is being saved and being being put into uh, double bags. And it's like there's, it's like at night, someone was saying, I think it was uh, Comic Crypt of Castle Hills, was saying uh, if it's a recent comic from the last few decades, you expect it to be 9.8. It should be 9.8. There's no excuse for a new, newer comic to be in bad shape because they weren't bought by kids. Kids don't buy comics anymore. Very few kids buy them. They're being bought by 30, 40, 50 year old uh, people. See, this, this comic here, um, this is not my childhood comic. This, this was, see, this was, you can tell this was on a, a, a spinner rack. It's got these things, they call them spine ticks because kids would paw through the comics and they'd get bent up. Nah, maybe it wasn't on a spinner rack because this is a direct uh, distribution thing. It was in a comic store, but comics still get bent up in the, in, the, in the back issue bins over many decades and no one was ever interested in Star-Lord. This probably sat in the back issue bin for 20 years or more before I bought it because it wasn't until the movie came out that anyone had even heard of Star-Lord. Yeah, because this was what Guardians of the Galaxy was, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy looked like that. When I was a kid. Merry Christmas from the Grunge World ah, Broadcasting shit. Network. Oh, my side really hurts, and my front hurts, and my back hurts. 
I think that's all. I got all, all sides covered. I wonder if um, James Gunn's gonna uh, put those uh, original Guardians of the Galaxy characters in his new movie. He sure seemed to hint at that at the closing of the last one. And he had Sylvester Stallone even playing one of them. Outlaw Kid. There's a cool cartoon called The Ape Girl um, from Terry Tunes. Gotta look that up on uh, YouTube. Kind of racy. I don't think that would have played on television much during Popeye and Friends. A little, little bit of nudity. Terry tunes are great. There's an artist um, named Milton Knight that does uh, old 1930s style funny animal kind of art. I think he worked on Mighty Mouse. He's, uh, I'm friends with him on Facebook. And it's fascinating to look at his page because it's just nothing but cool, the coolest images. And he's into these old cartoons, black and white cartoons. And, um, yeah, so uh, he's got a YouTube channel and he's, he's got some really good playlists of old music and cartoons. Um, here's a Charlton reprint from Modern Comics. Pebbles and Bam Bam. Wait a second. Uh, so, I guess there was an. Uh, there must have been. I, that's not Pebbles he's with. So, maybe there was some kind of Archie, Betty and Veronica angle in Pebbles and Bam Bam. I don't recall. But yeah, he's definitely not in there with. Because that's Pebbles. What's going on? That's how Charlton's logo. When I was first starting buying comics when I was a little kid, it looked like that, and that started looking like that. More like a Target. Hear that music? That show that TV show Shield, Agents of Shield, should have had music that sounded like that. They should have made it like a 60s spy show. The, um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was really cool because they were adapting the stories from the early days of Marvel there for a while. And then it seems like uh, what people are saying is um, they skipped over several decades of stories to get to the new woke shit that's coming out today. And that may, people are afraid, like a uh, man bear pig was saying this to me. Uh, it looks like, you know, this could really kill Marvel, all this, uh, you know, social justice warrior stuff. And then killing off most of their main characters just because the actors left silliness. 
There's Pep 271 playing Monopoly. Here's 287. When do they start make when do they stop making a cereal called Kellogg's Pep? I've never I don't think I've ever tried it. I don't think it was around when I was a kid, but whenever I listen to the old Superman radio shows from the 40s, it's always Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal presents The Adventures of Superman. So it was a big deal there for a while. Maybe they still make it. What do I know? Now, let's put this in a sleeve. This is a parody of X-Men. Oh, look at that down there. Caution, this is not a Marvel comic. I know it's ridiculous. Well, I don't. This one's too beat up to put in my because it, it, all this beat up shit will catch on them. I need to make sure it's a wide bag. Green Lantern and Green Arrow reprints. You know, it's fun that people are starting to recognize the changes in the back issue selection that I'm working on and people are commenting about how much better it looks and people are starting to buy the comics and stuff and it makes me feel like I'm doing something useful in the world and, and this channel makes me feel like I'm doing something too but um, you know it's really uh, you uh, you know, what you do for a living is important to you, and when you retire, it kind of takes away your self-esteem a little bit, and, and you want to be recognized for doing something. And there were wonderful and horrible things about the career that I had, and there were But you just remember the good stuff. You know, the students I was teaching, I'd like to be there for their promotion ceremony, but I don't even know if they're going to have one. It may be done virtually through a Zoom meeting or something. So I'd still like to be there. I always love this ad. Isn't that great? When you're in third grade and you see an ad like this, it just blows your mind. It's from a Yeah, I mean it's like it's in a regular comic, but they got like the, see that little guy there, the Panama Red, that's like a marijuana deal. And, and you're a kid, but you recognize that, hey, there, they got an ad here in a regular comic. I was trying to see. Um, 
I was trying to see if there was one that said beaver patrol, but there isn't. But there is a little beaver there. And what is that supposed to mean? It's, uh, it's the uh, Roach Studios. This comic is really in nice shape. It's a reprint comic, but it's, uh, there was like a whole, uh, bunch of these in an antique store near the, near where I worked at, and, uh, and they put price tags right on them, but they, they had, like, multiple copies of the same issues, and they're just like, they like, they just came off the stand, so... Someone must have owned a store and, and had some back issue stock and they were kept in a nice environment. So, I haven't tried to remove that price tag. And it's not like this is a high dollar comic or anything. It's just cool that it survived in this shape. This is not my childhood copy. No. This is one I've... I don't think it is. This is, um... Could be. But I'm not thinking it is. This is some... I must have bought another copy. This is Marvel 2-on-1 number 1. Or as it says up here, Marvel 2-on-1. I always love this cover. This does not look like my childhood copy. Uh, I wouldn't have, uh, I would have, I think my childhood copy's in the other room. Because I wouldn't allow, allow a comic in third, or was it fourth, probably fourth grade this came out. Let's find out. Ugh, damn it. January 74. January 74, okay. So that means it came out in January 74. So November of 73. So I got this in third grade. But Marvel Treasury Edition came out at the beginning of fourth grade. So I've been telling this story that I discovered Marvel superheroes through Marvel Treasury Edition number two. But I think, well, I was buying the monster stuff. I was buying the monster of Frankenstein. I was buying supernatural thrillers. I was buying Man-Thing. I was buying the horror comics in third grade. This came out in third grade, so I was probably buying it for the man thing, and probably thought the thing was cool, but a few mo short months after this, when I actually saw the old Kirby and Stan Lee Fantastic Four reprints, then I, I really fell hard for the, for the superheroes. So... That's the story on this, because this, this predates my Fantastic Four Awakening. Yeah, you guys need to do videos and talk about, you know, we had to read some book in college, The Awakening, it's some feminist novel from 100 years ago. But when was your awakening? When did you awaken to whatever it is that you really love in comics? What was it that caused you to really uh, fall for it maybe that would be a good theme for you to do as a video I would sure like to watch those videos uh, there's a guy comic classic comic collector I think that's what he's called on YouTube he has red hair he collects 
a lot of romance comics and he has a really good channel and for a while he was doing a, an origin thing where he would interview different people like Metarog and, and, and they would tell how they got into comics and uh, that was really interesting. I think it's Classic Key Collector or Classic, no, no, not Key Collector, Classic Comic Collector. Metarog is of course really into Metal Men. This is a reprint Metal Men comic. Showcase presents Power Girl. Later they would give her a little window over her boobs. Well, things are just surreal. The world is surreal. I think there's supposed to be a ceasefire in the Israel thing, but I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. But everything seems to be going wrong in the country, and uh, it's it's almost you know it's almost June, and I've got this shirt on. It's not even hot upstairs, but but. Uh, because usually, usually it's already, like I said, oppressively hot at this time, and it's just every day, rain, overcast, that is absolutely not normal. Somebody's got some thumb on some switch or a finger on some button, and they're altering the weather. This looks like, do you see the darkness at the top? This is one of uh, realizing the, there was a, a buy, a comic book buy at the comic store where they bought, somebody had a comic collection and they'd gone through a fire and the comics weren't burned. Some of them had smoke damage to different degrees some it was like soot that would wipe off and get your fingers dirty and you could kind of clean it off but it was still just disgusting and some of them just had a some some of them had more uh, like a whole bunch of black darkness at the top but this one i can just tell was one of them this one wasn't touched as badly That's a cool panel. Our Army at War, number 214, featuring Sergeant Rock. Peacemaker out outlaws outlaw kid metal men I 
I like this cover. Does a dead person really come to life in GI combat? Or are they just telling a legend here? This is fucking cool, but it seems like it's more weird war territory. I think it's, uh, let's see if it's just a, I haven't read this yet. I'll just... Well, what am I thinking? Of course they had uh, they had supernatural element. What about the haunted tank? I've completely forgotten about that. And the dinosaurs and all that. Yeah. If only war could have been that cool that you, you'd be in a tank that's haunted by your... Um, ancestor from the Civil War, or you have to fight dinosaurs when you land on an island in the Pacific, or uh, sometimes zombies. Mr. Miracle number 11. Millie the Model. You know, Marvel was limited in how many comics they could put out in the 60s. You know? They could put out a I mean they could put out and straighten the camera. They could uh, you know like you had uh, Doctor Strange had to team up with Nick Fury in a comic and you had Captain America and, and, and Iron Man and Submariner and Hulk didn't have their own comics. They had to share comics, right? Strange tales, tales of suspense, tales to astonish, all that. But you think, well, they also put out Western comics and they put out Millie the Model and couldn't they have gotten rid of Millie the Model, the Western comics, and then just given the Hulk or Iron Man their own comic? But that tells me that they were that these comics were selling well enough to girls, and the Western comics were selling to an entirely different audience than the superhero comics. So they kept them going for that reason, I guess. Um, oh, look at that. Um, yeah. I guess that's what happened. Not an Archie comic, but an incredible simulation. I guess I'll reuse that. Um, yeah, it's one of those weird things. It was being forced on them by DC, the, I guess the distributor somehow, I don't remember the story exactly, but Marvel was controlled by this distributor and how many titles they could put out. And when that was done away with, and all of a sudden, I think in 1968, then Iron Man, Hulk, they all got their own, Doctor Strange all got their own comics and started with issue one, uh, Submariner, uh, Hulk, 
continue the, the numbering of the previous comic. And, uh, and then in the early 70s, Marvel put out an explosion of comics in order to try to bury DC and the other companies on the racks. And, uh, and they just reprinted tons of stuff from the 50s. And not just reprinted horror comics, but they tried to reprint old kid, like Dennis the Menace imitations and uh, funny animal comics, anything they could find in their back issue uh, art files to uh, bury DC. It was just an explosion of monster and horror comics in the early 70s from DC and Marvel and Charlton and Gold Key. All Everybody was putting them out. Um, that's kind of weird. Here's your uh, issue of Warlord, right? It's a great comic, you know. Very Edgar Rice Burroughs. But when you, when you turn the page, I think this is just a coincidence, right? You've got this, this page of art showing the weird but then, then it's, it's weird how this ad just seems to tie in right with it it's a lifesavers ad that seems it, it, was that just coincidental that the artwork in this and and again it's de debunking my theory that they used to only have two pages of art and two pages of ads because here's that modern shit back then art and an ad together so i guess i'm wrong this is kind of how i remember it two pages of art always ah see i'm wrong because here's a here it's another ad plus art on this side it's sergeant rock they tried to sell sergeant rock action figures there um and uh from Remco, and that was early 80s. That would have been nineteen eighty-two. I never bought any of the Sergeant Rock figures. I don't remember them being very impressive looking. I figure that's when they brought back G.I. Joe, but brought back G.I. Joe as a little miniature figure the size of the Star Wars action figures and and then that exploded for, um, and Marvel had their um, a comic version of that. I'm seeing that a lot of these uh, toy com comics based on toys are um, kind of expensive now. Thundercats and things. Well, that was based on, a, was that based on a t toy line? Or, yeah, I think that was a toy line and it was a cartoon to promote the toy line and then a comic book. But yeah, um, surprising. Um, I wonder if part of the pains that I'm feeling are from bending over and filing comics. It's like I got a pain here on the back and on this side, I'm like all around under my rib cage. I'm all effed up. Here's a comic from my childhood, Richie Rich 124. This is more indicative of how I would have treated a comic. It's just not as beat up as that Marvel 2 in 1. And this is from. I hate it when they do this. You open it up and then there's an ad there. It makes you think a page was torn out. And then another ad, and then the art starts. Um, I'm 
January 74. That's the same, uh, that's the same month as that Marvel 2 in 1, isn't it? I probably, I might have bought this the same day I bought the other one. Um, making November of 73 the beginning of my third grade year. What, looking at this, make, it, it makes me miss Donald Trump even more. Richie Rich. Isn't that horrible monster, uh, what was his name? Uh, Macaulay Culkin played Richie Rich in a movie. And there's whole several generations that only know Richie Rich from that movie. You realize that? Little Dot, wonderful, Little Lotta. Could you do that today? I don't know. Here's the Fun Factory. Yeah, they were doing that at that time period. They would, you'd open it up to an ad. Did not do that. Sea Monkey, you know what the Sea Monkey ad looks like. Oh, see, they were doing wacky package uh, ripoffs. See, wacky TV shows. Barnaby Bones instead of Barnaby Jones. Damn. But see, there were so many Richie Rich titles. I don't know how many Richie Rich titles existed. This is Richie Rich Cash, number 26. But that's why I got sick of Marvel doing that to the X-Men. It's like, I, I can't buy all these X-Men titles. I'm not a fucking Richie Rich. And then those, those comics are like, you go through, they're pretty much worthless. And then it's like, ah, oh, then the next one is like huge because it introduces Apocalypse or something. You know, I'm thinking X Factor and the. What is the other one? Uh, there's X Factor and there's X Force. That's. Yeah, and then there's uh, New Mutants. Those New Mutants comics are getting a little pricier. And I still haven't seen the movie. Um, it's on. Uh, I think it's on Disney Plus. I need to see, watch that. It has the. The, the lady that played the lead in The King's Gambit, which was a really good TV show on, I think on Netflix. I don't know who had that. There's the Polaris nuclear sub. Yeah, you gotta watch The King's Gambit. They even have a scene where she goes into a local store and there's a spinner rack there. But if you freeze frame it, you'll realize that they don't have the right era comics for the early 60s in the rack, but... It was still a cool gesture uh, to try to make it look, period. I did a little episode last summer where I freeze-framed it and showed what comics were on the rack. And so did that guy, uh, what was that guy's name? <sighs> what is his name? It's something weird. Uh, it's, it's not a... The guy that's trying to get his comic collection down to 500 comics, and he's always like looking at all the corners. What is his name? I don't know. He did a thing about that comic spinner rack that was that made a guest appearance in that TV show. It's about a chess champ, a female chess champion in the 60s. It's a, it's a lot of fun. The, the show is great. It only has a few little political messages that they had to throw in there, but for the most part, it's free of all of that crap. Here's Richie Rich, dollars and cents.
and see, it's like, man, look at all these sad sack comics that came out, and all the Casper comics. They, they were just a, and yet the art didn't really suffer. The art's pretty good, consistent. It was always very consistent in these Harvey comics. I mean, um, hey kids, dig this. This is when uh, they had a Richie Rich song and Casper, What You Doing on the Moon. You can hear them on YouTube, the songs. It says, uh, you heard them on TV and radio, now get your records. Hey kids, dig this, the first red hot disc on the Harvey label is headed your way. Zooming for the top 10, a double header, Casper, What You Doing on the Moon and Richie Rich by the grooviest, genshiest rock and roll group ever, namely the Comics. That's the band, the Comics, spelled with an X. Special introductory offer. While they last, two brand new comic books free at Casper 25 Cent and a Richie Rich 25 Cent magazine. Free with your order. Hurry, only one dollar gets you this fantastic 45 RPM hit about Casper's famous moon flight. And on the other side, it's Richie Rich, the smatcheroo about the richest kid in the world. That's actually a pretty good deal. A dollar and you get a, a two, you know, 45 RPM record with a couple of comics. And, and that was, um, and it's a good, pretty good song. December 72. So this came out in October of 71. So I was in first grade when I bought this. Pretty good condition for a first grader. Get in the bag. I have two copies of this issue. I could have sworn I remember. It must be this copy. I remember my brother, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I think he, with a red crayon, drew some motion lines behind his car. And uh, it looks like they've rubbed off over time. Yeah, because you can still see the trace of it. Or may, oh, I think what I did when I was in elementary school, I didn't like that he'd drawn on it. And I must have used an eraser, a pencil eraser, to get rid of, see that motion line? You can see the trace of it. And see if there's a little bit of the green erased. Yeah. I guess my brother thought that was cool. The Casper merchandise. And then you could buy a life-size ghost to be your friend, I guess. Wait, when did this come out? It's important for my... Uh, important for nothing. March 72. So January of 72. Again, this came out my first grade year of school. Um, so we were living in Germany. And both my older brothers were still in the house then because my oldest brother graduated high school in 72. And then he was off to college 
and then my uh, middle brother was still still had several he didn't graduate high school I think he was class of 74 and then yeah and then I was class of 83 so I came along years later as a little mistake I think but hopefully my life hasn't been a mistake hopefully I've done I know I've I've helped people the students I taught there's a good number of them that I really changed their lives and made a difference in their lives and some of them and some of them have gone on, have thanked me they've gone on to become teachers and done great things instead of what maybe the neighborhood might have thought that they would wind, wind up doing um, and uh, so and this one's got a damn Someone put a drink on this one. See the little circle? I hate that. Neither one of these is in perfect shape. Probably wondering why am I worried about a Richie Rich comic? It's not like it's Hulk 181. Well, this is important to me and my history, and I love this stuff. These Harvey comics taught me to read, and, and they're wonderful. But it's not a key issue. I did not see Richie Rich Millions number 52 on my key collector app. It is not a key issue. Why do you care? Only by key issues. And then you send them off and have them slabbed. And why do you listen to that old music? Why don't you listen to Cardi B's Wet Ass Pussy? It's the number one song in the nation. Even Joe Biden likes it. And he's cool. He wears aviator glasses and everything. Weird War, number 59. Just amazing stuff. Warlord, Weird War, X-Men. This comic has no value. I paid a dollar, less than a dollar for it. But it's cool to me. And it's a... Um, Marvel Triple Action reprint of the Avengers. And yeah, usually these reprint comics didn't reproduce everything completely, but this one's just so, the pages are so white. It feels like a brand new comic. Look at this ad for the first issue of Crazy. Crazy was a good magazine at first. I mean, it was really good. The artwork was great. The humor was biting and sick like uh, National Lampoon pretty much uh, yeah Wally Wood uh, did the inking this issue but um you gotta um Appreciate everything. It's 
Marvel 2-in-1, number 5, thing with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and Captain America's in there too. That's what these Marvel movies are missing, is the goddamn thing. This kid in the comic store was asking, what's your favorite superhero? And I said, well, probably the thing. Here's, uh, we saw the thing punching through the man thing. Here's Shang-Chi punching through. Yeah. Great artwork in these Kung Fu comics. And the Marvel value stamp. Telling this younger person at the comic store about these Marvel value stamps that you need to flip through comics from this time period, from the 25 cent era, and make sure they're not cut out because they were in every Marvel comic. I understand they can't reprint, they were able to reprint the early, you know, the issues of this in an omnibus form only once that after that they can't reprint it anymore because it's uh, um, because they have Fu Manchu in there and Marvel doesn't have the rights to Fu Manchu anymore how how hard would it be for Disney to pick up a phone and buy the rights to Fu Manchu. They would love to sell the, whoever owns Fu Manchu would love to sell the rights to Disney. Are you kidding me? But I'm sure they don't want to use, that they said they're using the Mandarin. But uh, putting Fu Manchu in there would have been cool. And you know, the question is now, is it racist to have Fu Manchu? Well, not if your hero is also Chinese. I don't think so, but if... I don't know. Yeah. Let's see if they do that right. I'm, I'm pulling for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I want it to keep going and keep going well. I just don't really care about... I don't care about any of these new characters. I don't care about Ms. Marvel, Camilla Khan. I don't care about Iron Girl or whatever her name is, the Iron Teenager Girl. I don't care about Miles Morales. I like this time period. I don't know anything. I mean, it, I watched that Miles Morales cartoon. I enjoyed it. I uh, don't. It's not not my world, man. I don't. I don't understand it. Uh, Charlton attack. Forgive me, I've shown you all these comics before recently. I'm just uh, going through and uh, bagging them. Um, but I'm running out of these bags. hours 19 minutes uh, I am starving I still have to open that uh, blow up that damn bad sleeping bag for my friend Captain Savage
and it's Leatherneck Raiders. I got a little psychedelic ad there. Well, this is a war comic that brings in Hydra and uh, Ben Grimm appears in a few issues. So it ties itself into the bigger Marvel superhero world. Dragon Wheels. This is in terrible condition. But it's still part of our comic book history and must be treated with respect. Instead of terrible condition, we need to just say it's a well loved comic. was pretty well loved too. Swamp Thing number 17. That was number 20. Number 16. That was just a headline that flashed at the top of my phone just now that says Kathleen Kennedy is being replaced. That would be great. Heads need to roll at Disney. I mean, they've made Star Wars for no self-respecting Star Wars fan would want to watch anything new. I think they canceled this spinoff from The Mandalorian. and um, They never should have gotten rid of that, that bodybuilder girl. That was stupid. Because she was well loved, and, and just because she made some conservative comment. Here's a reprint of '60s Doom Patrol. This was the this was the greatest shit in the world. And the we've got to get caught up. My wife and I have to watch the last season of the TV show, but I don't think they've ever gotten. Um, we're waiting on her to start actually stretching and getting big. And I don't like that they don't move a robot man's jaw when he talks. That wouldn't be that hard to do. But um, it's a good show. It's It goes a little bit too far into the R-rated material, just like the Teen Titans TV show also dips its toe into R-rated stuff too much. It's not, it's, it's 
bottom line, it's a kid's show. I mean, it's a kid's comic book. It's got Robin from Batman in it, for crying out loud. It was meant for kids when it came out. Uh, turning it into some show with nudity and extreme violence is just... So there's a place for that, and a time and place for that kind of stuff. Not that, because it would, if they just clean that show up a little bit, it would be really cool for kids. You know what's really cool is uh, that's done. They don't overdo the violence and everything. Is that Star Girl TV show? That that was a fun show. And it's in the way they show the super villains with the headquarters underground. It's just, it's just wonderful. They really get it. At least they did in the first season. Watch them screw it up the second season. But bags but I'm just gonna put the rest of this stuff in this box and then soon I will get bags and that uh, like Superman meets Top Cat and I'm sure that's gonna be a very good read and then Mighty Samson and all this stuff Yeah, I wonder why my back's hurting, and this, look what I'm doing. Maybe it's called old age. <laughs> I still need to go back through more of these 60s teen magazines that we were looking at a while back. I still got more to... I can get another episode out of that, maybe tomorrow. I need to be working up here um, tomorrow uh, upstairs, and uh, maybe I'll just leave the camp, put the camera up on top of a cabinet, and just do that. I, I'm just, just like a live stream. That uh, there's a girl on. Uh, YouTube Mecca Random 42, I think is her name. Sometimes she'll just like do a live stream of herself cooking dinner and then she goes in and she's building some rack for her DVDs and she just keeps the camera going and talks to the people in the chat. It's kind of wild. All right. Excuse my language. You didn't hear that. <laughs> what else do I have? Okay. Okay, so that's done. Now those comics over there. All right, so the next thing that I need to do is go into the other room and blow up a mattress. First of all, let me pick up some of these bags that are not going to be reused. Because they could be a slipping hazard. And I've just been throwing them on the floor. I didn't really think about this. I just stuck that sticker on there about four or five years ago, but now it's kind of apropos <laughs> because there's a lot of uh, people that voted that they say are over 120 years old. See, there's a lot of people on the social security rolls that are about that age too. All right.
traditional Friday ritual of blowing up a mattress can now commence. What a mess. I haven't left room to get out of here. I gotta move stuff aside. This will be amazing when I get this all clear. I saw a Victorian house in Iowa with over 4,000 square feet. And it was a like a $110,000. So the question is, what's wrong with that house or what's wrong with the community around it? Because something's up. Yeah, either you got crackhead, meth head, meth lab next door or uh, who knows what. in a place called Sac City, S-A-C, City. I think the cats don't need more water. Okay. Yeah, these weeks are passing so quick. It seems like it was just a couple of days ago that I was doing this. Turning on this stereo so I can hear Ratu radio in this room. What is the damn hole? There it is. Okay. Here's a Jack Chick track. Jack Chick. Always loved Jack Chick. Very um, scared more people than EC Comics with those tracks. Uh, okay, so I'm putting this mattress up. For my uh God damn it. All right. This is room three of uh, floor seven that I'm in now. And this is where I'm going to start doing more episodes. Um, coming up soon. Okay. Plugged in. Let's blow this sucker up. <laughs> So I have this mattress blowing up, and then my friend likes to put this mattress on top of it. I think because of his bad back or something. <sighs> something like that. And then this so-called pillow will go at the top where normal 
people put their heads. Let's see. Yeah, he should be arriving any minute in his van. His van has over a million miles on the engine. Nothing can stop that van. Am I the first person that's used a, one of these masks as a Christmas decoration? Soon that will become the cool new thing, I bet. It's probably, maybe it's too soon, but you get a bunch of colorful ones, you could make your tree really festive with those uh, surgeon masks. So much for that. Well, it's been a lot of fun here. I look terrible. And I got more sleep than usual last night. But anyway, I guess I'll uh, be seeing you.